Hi everyone. I've seen an uptick in speculation about the wall behind me in the comments section recently. Almost all the comments have expressed concern for my welfare and many of them have involved suggestions for things that I might do to fix the situation. I'm always really touched by these comments and I, I appreciate them coming from a loving place. But the first thing I think when uh, I read them is, oh, you all must be new here because um, I've addressed this this issue a number of times in live streams both last year and actually also the year before. Um, today though I noticed a comment that made me think that I need to address this more directly um, for the benefit of newer subs. Um, I shan't give you the name of the person or indicate which video the comment was left on but I am going to read you the text <clears throat> because I think there's a teaching moment here. So it says, <clears throat> I don't want to offend you but the dirt factor in the environment that you give your readings in has grown over time and now it is becoming overwhelming. The mould or black dirt on your wall along with the crumbling plaster is projecting a dark and decaying energy. You are a brilliant reader but you seem oblivious to the dirty and unkempt image that you present to the world. Maybe you just don't care or well, this is simply the way that you live and you are happy with it. It's your life and your channel, but you need to know how the dirty environment affects some of us who are sensitive to such things. So I thought I would give you some facts about this dirty environment so that you know exactly what's going on here. So here goes. Fact number one, I live in a rental property. This has been my home for the last eight years. Fact number two, what you can see behind me there is the result of multiple points of water ingress that the landlord has declined to repair, leading to a degradation of the interior of the room that's gone on over two years, I think. Fact number three, what you can't see <clears throat> is all the other places in the house where damp is an issue. I mean, not just water ingress, but also rising damp. Um, as things stand at the moment, I also have no hot water and no heating because my boiler is broken. Fact number four, instead of repairing said issues, my landlord issued me with a notice of possession, giving me six months to find somewhere else to live. Fact number five, the UK rental market is congested as fuck right now. Um, housing itinerary is at a 20 year low and prices are artificially inflated. Despite my best efforts, I have not been able to secure a new property. <clears throat> Fact number six, at the end of January, the landlord applied to the court for an eviction order uh, on an accelerated pathway, no less, meaning that he is attempting to deprive me of an opportunity to present in court evidence of this being a retaliatory uh, eviction. Fact number seven, this wall and all of the other issues in the house now form the basis of a civil suit that I have actioned against the landlord. Final fact. I am shuttling all of my belongings from this house into self-storage containers six miles away from here. My children and I are likely to end up in local authority emergency accommodation simply because I asked for some repairs. Now, these are the facts about the condition of my environment, and I hope that this clears up any notion whatsoever that I may be oblivious to it. So. You might say, Carrie, well, if you know it's really gross, it looks awful, why don't you cover it up? Yeah, that's fair. I could do that. I could set up a green screen and give you a, a lovely tropical island or a, like a log cabin backdrop that you could look at. I could uh, nail a pretty tapestry to the wall or a black velvet cloth, you know, into the render. What remains of the render? <clears throat> so it doesn't appear in the videos anymore. And um, do you know what? Up until the end of last year, that is exactly what I did do. But I took it down again, deliberately. You know, one of the things that people tell me most often about this channel and about me, <clears throat> the reason that they keep coming back is because I am authentic. When I talk to you, I'm not trying to be a, a spiritual guru or some, you know, super successful life coach. There's no, just follow these five steps to change your life using the law of attraction uh, vibe going on here on this channel. Like, I am just trying to be who I needed when I was younger. I'm trying to help people achieve perspective by sharing what worked for me.
And a huge part of that authenticity is bearing my soul and showing you all who I am. Who I've become over decades of making mistakes and learning from them. <clears throat> I'm just a woman who has been at the bottom of a lot of very deep, dark holes and knows something of the way out again. Just like I say, the description box in my videos, you know. I let you see it all. The good, the bad and the ugly. And I took the black cloth down because it was hiding something from you. I took it down because it made me feel like I was trying to present a, a, a false picture of my life. And it didn't sit well with me. It was this false reality. Pin this for a second because we're going to come back to it. But let me tell you, some of you newest subscribers, some facts that you may not know about me. So I am an autistic mother of five autistic children, four of whom still live at home with me. The eldest is just about to finish university and I home educate the youngest three of them who all have pretty complex needs. Um, in 2017 I was assaulted whilst out celebrating my 37th birthday and I sustained a brain injury. This eventually led to a, a diagnosis of post-concussion disorder and the most notable effects of that are on my working memory and my verbal fluency and I still very much struggle with that to this day. Uh, fun fact, I am largely deaf. If I can't see your lips move, chances are I can't hear you at all. Uh, my daughter died in 2003 and my, uh, my husband in 2005. Uh, I had an abusive childhood. I had uh, two major relationships in my life that were also abusive. I have in the past struggled with an eating disorder and self-harm. Now, I'm not telling you any of these things because I want you to feel sorry for me. I absolutely do not. <clears throat> Rather, I'm telling you this because all of this stuff is known to my longer term subscribers, my patrons and, and bits of it to anyone that I've ever done a personal reading for, probably much, much more actually than I've even outlined here. The authenticity that I am known for is a byproduct of not hiding those things about myself that were I more concerned about how it looked to other people, I absolutely would. I choose not to live in shame or fear about anything and I choose to be vulnerable. The reason that I'm on YouTube at all is to try and help people benefit from my experience, to consider trying to look at things a different way to get some perspective, you know? My whole raison d'etre now, it seems, is helping people lose the shame and the fear that causes them to live in the same survival mode that I existed in for the longest time. And it's a miserable existence. And it doesn't have to be that way. You can grow to be so much bigger than anything that challenges you. This so much chaotic instability in my life at the moment. Well, I guess actually for the for the past lit year, uh, that is so beautifully symbolized by that hideous wall behind me. If you think I'm not sensitive to that, you are out of your fucking mind. But the wall doesn't define me. The things I had told you about myself earlier do not define me. The turmoil in my life right now doesn't define me. I would hope <clears throat> that you can see that despite being in the midst of an intensely challenging period that has tested me personally greatly, I'm here for you. Week in and week out, I show up. And as far as I'm concerned, <sighs> that should be what defines me. I'm sorry that your sensitivities to my environment make you uncomfortable. But if you cannot detach from judgmental tendencies enough to see me and have some respect for the fact that I am still here trying to be of service to others, well, there's not much I can do about that. I'm not happy about the way any of this looks, just as I'm not happy about the time that I spent being throttled by my own shadow over the years, making mistakes and holding crappy judgments of myself and others. But I'm not going to hide things about myself that are uncomfortable to see. Life can often be very burdensome and exigent, but it is possible not to allow things that are wrong now dictate how you choose to emotionally engage with life. 
if that's perceived as me being oblivious, then uh, so be it. But it's not the case. If I can remain a, a, a brilliant reader in the midst of such a dark and decaying energy, I feel that says a lot about the message that I bring. So take me or leave me, but have some self-awareness when sitting in judgment of others or attempting to shame them. Compassion and empathy are always a better alternative. Thank you for listening. <laughs>